Thanks for uh, stopping by the shop. My name's Chuck. And uh, no machining, but a couple of uh, things I wanted to show you that I've built and some changes that have occurred in my shop. The um, one thing, we'll move it over. Um, I've talked about this before, the, the shield that I made. I made one for my mill and made one for my lathe. Um, the thing that I wanted to point out was this magnetic base. Um, this magnetic base came off of one of these guys. One of these, uh, you turn, you know, it's a snaky thing and you turn the lever and it, and it locks up. Never really functioned very well. So it's been sitting there hanging there on the, on the wall with the magnet. And uh, I said, well, I need a nice magnet base when I was making this. And uh, it works out great. And the cool thing is, uh, if I had a piece of chip, you know, the, uh, it's down here in the pan, all sorts of chips. But the, it's, uh, it's not magnetic on the outside, only underneath. So you don't end up with chips all over the guy hanging on. So I'm pretty happy about that, kind of excited. The uh, second thing uh, I was uh, cleaning in here, and we're going to turn, I'll talk to you and show you the camera. But uh, there was an uh, indicator box, or a caliper box. Then what the hell is that doing back here? It must be empty. And they shook it, and I go, there's something in it. And I opened it up, and there's a Minotoyo uh, caliper in it. I don't, brand new. I don't remember buying it. I don't remember where it came from. Um, but uh, it's a nice surprise, huh? So I guess it's good getting old. You can't remember. So uh, talking about can't remembering, uh, the other day I saw a couple of, uh, you know, the, the uh, power strips and uh, I needed one. And I remember when I found them the other day, two of them, I oh shit, I got two of these. I can't find them. I've opened up every drawer that I own, both here in the wood shop, and maybe I dreamt about it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was this little uh, item I made. And uh, I'll bring the camera in closer and we'll take a look at it. But I purchased this uh, Minotoyo uh, uh, half-thou uh, half indicator, um, and it doesn't have a, uh, a back on it. It just has the flat back, and so it's been sitting around here, and this isn't my idea, but I saw it on the web, and I had a photo of it, and it's been sitting there in my photo files forever, and uh, so I went ahead and uh, made the copy of it today. We'll move the camera, and we'll talk about it. Um, other than that, uh, I've been doing a couple of little projects around here. Uh, I helped uh, Vince... Uh, Ender, uh, we ground uh, his uh, Windy Hill Square, and uh, I also had a viewer that sent me some uh, parallels uh, that he needed ground, and I ground some parallels for him. Um, but let me uh, let me move the camera, and uh, we'll go through a couple things here, and uh, get on with the show. So here you can see the. Uh the shield that I made. It works really nice. It's flexible. It can move around. It's uh, basically stopped uh, the chips from hitting me. And the fact that this base is non-magnetic uh, on the exterior is great. Just have to clean off the, uh, the bottom of it. So great addition. And right now it sits over on my toolbox. And we're going to take a walk down there and uh, talk about this toolbox. So the bottom green box I've had back here by the Monarch for some time. And this top Craftsman, um, I, I got a uh, Vidmar cabinet for the main shop for my tools. And so I was looking at selling this. And actually I put it on Craigslist. And then uh, I, I was in here cleaning and I thought, well, heck, why not go ahead and put this toolbox on top of the existing existing toolbox and uh, pick up some more uh, storage and uh, this I'm really happy with this um, I can still get out the door uh, to the which is over here and uh, I've added much more storage right next to the uh, lathe and uh, happy about that so a little bit of a change here 
and we're going to flip the camera. So this is back at my surface plate and if you might recall right back up here where the whiteboard is I had a uh, gray cabinet that sat down on top of the uh, stainless top there and all it did was collect things on the stainless top just like it's done already but the problem is I couldn't open the cabinet doors. Uh, another issue that I had lost my whiteboard when I had moved another cabinet in in the shop which you've seen in the past the the brown uh, tall cabinet so this worked out well uh, one I've uh, got my whiteboard back which I really missed uh, you can see the indicators off the granite uh, slab so I've got a little more space on the granite slab and um, and I got a clean worktop if I don't stack things on it so pretty happy about that and uh, let's move over here and we'll take a look at the tool. Sorry for it being a little bit dark over here. Um, but basically you can see the setup of the tool. It's uh, two pieces of aluminum. Just glass beaded it to uh, give it a finish. And hit it with some clear lacquer, uh, satin lacquer, so that my fingerprints aren't all over it. And then uh, the bottom is uh, lapped on... Uh, a copy of the Robin Ronzetti sand, sander plate. But the uh, cool thing on this is you set zero and then uh, you can go ahead and set it up on a block. Let's see, it might zero. I can't see it in the dark here. Uh, maybe it's not even on. So we're at zero there and set it up on a block and find out the thickness of that block. Yeah, you can do this in a variety of ways, correct? But I think where it's going to become helpful is over on the surface grinder when we have a magnetic plate and I want to check a tolerance. So I got another idea on this also, so we're going to move down, the, uh, down to the mill. So here we are over at the mill and this is one example. Um, a lot of times you're very close to the jaw and you have a part in there or part to part and you want a, a height difference. It's set at zero. You can set it right there and it gives me my distance that my part is above the vise. So I think it's going to be a handy little tool in the shop and uh, making use of something that was basically sitting in the drawer. Let's uh, take a look at one more item. So I mentioned that I had uh, removed that cabinet uh, that was on the uh, stainless top down there. And that had a lot of my uh, angle blocks and fixtures. And I've ended up moving it here into this card file cabinet. And these card file cabinets can just hold an immense amount of weight per drawer. I think they're almost equivalent of a Lista. But here we go. I want to uh, open this up and show you the um, I'm going to turn on the back of my camera here. There we go. Pardon the handheld here, but it is up in the air. But I managed to move all of this stuff into this one cabinet. Still, drawer still coming out. So I've got the there's blocks back here, angle block, uh, 246 blocks. There's a suburban block right here. One, two, threes, or one, two, threes. And a lot of little small stuff for setting up fixtures and things. So I'm really happy I've got all this in one drawer now. Um, it uh, makes it much uh, cleaner and uh, I think it'll help prevent rust also, but time will tell. Okay, well guys, uh, that's about it here in the shop. Uh, thanks for uh, stopping by, and I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll catch you on the next uh, video uh, somewhere here in the future.